Great. Hi, this is Julia Biddup with Talk, Talk Story Media, and I have with me today Captain Time, Garland Carl Colson. Colson, yes. And uh, he's going to give us some tips on time management, right? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Okay. What, what, are, what are ideas do you have for us? Well, one of the first things is we always hear that time flies. So that means it needs a pilot. So you need to be <laughs> the pilot. Otherwise, the time is just an airplane flying out of control and it's going to go, it's going to go everywhere. So the first thing is to take control of your time. A lot of people think we don't really have any control. We think, oh, I've got all these family demands. I've got my work demands. Um, you know, so I have no control myself. But you do. You've chosen to be in those things. You've chosen that kind of work. And even within all these areas, there are choices that you can make. So, so the first thing is to realize you're the one in control and to start working with that. And this cup raises the idea of always being aware of your time. So much of our time slips through our fingers because we watch TV or we watch funny cat videos on YouTube, which are fun, but probably need a limit on them. Uh, so there's just so much screen time we have now that any time we had to get real things accomplished seems like our, our entire evening is gone and, and we really haven't accomplished any of the things we want to do. So taking control and being fully aware of how you are spending your time is are two of the key things. And, and that also comes to not letting others spend your time for you. And that means family, friends, um, even coworkers, you know, not letting them just choose when your time is to be spent. You need to do that yourself. If you have somebody who shows up at your house all the time unannounced when you have other projects happened, you need to just say no. And if they continue to do it, just say, oh, I was just on my way out and grab your coat and leave. So you need to set those boundaries really firmly so people can't just take over and, and can't spend your time. The other thing is with this awareness comes, what are the outcomes you really want? And um, I, I can use the word goals, but a lot of people hate the word goals because sometimes you get these horrible work goals like, oh, you sold a million dollars last year. This year you'll sell three. You know, it's like, a, how am I going to do this? So, but think of outcomes. What are those really important outcomes you'd like to achieve over the next month, over the next year, or the next five years, your career? What are those? What are those? And then say, wow, okay, I want this outcome. What are the steps to get there? And then setting aside time for those to do those steps. So one of the, um, uh, you know, one example is, let's say you think you've got a book in you somewhere that you think that you could, you could uh, write, write a book someday if you were to, to uh, pay attention to it. So really, if you were to spend an hour a day, your book would be done in less, less than a year, probably six, six or eight months. But most of us don't do that. We, instead, we go, I, sh I really wish I'd written that book. I should have done it when I was younger. Maybe when I retire, I'll write that book. <laughs> but we, don't, you know, we don't really set aside any time for it. Uh, and this is true of any outcome you want. If you want an outcome to be you write a book, you learn a musical instrument, you learn something that's going to help you in your career, your life, um, you spend more time with your family. A lot of people say, oh, my family is the most important thing to me. I say, great, show me on your calendar where you've set aside quality time for your family. And most people go, um because they really aren't setting aside any plan time. And most of their time they say they're spending with their family or spent getting them ready for bed, cleaning up, doing dishes. It's not really family time. It's not like, oh, Thursday is board game night or, you know, Saturday afternoon is where we all go um, hiking in the park or, or something like that. So it's not quality time. And yet we say family's most important, but we have no, no dedicated time for that. Right. So that's the key is working from the outcomes. And then ask yourself, every time you're about to work on a task, you pick up something, you're doing it, say, is this the highest priority task I could be doing right now for my highest priority outcome? And in most cases, the answer is no. Most of the work we do in a day has nothing to do with outcomes, nothing to do with high priority. 
So, so we really don't have any focused time on our high priority items. Another key one is to work with your energy levels. And so we all think, oh, I should be more disciplined. I should do this. I should do that. There's a reason you're not doing that. We only have a certain level of discipline and a certain level of willpower. And as we go throughout the day, we use it up. And when it's gone, no matter what you do, you can't force yourself to focus. So the trick is to work with when is my energy the highest? When am I at my best and most brightest? When do I have the most brain power up here? When is that? So for me, it's first thing in the morning. Um, I, I, I'm really good first thing in the morning, two or three in the afternoon, and there's just nothing left. No matter how much coffee I drink, there's nothing left. So by knowing this, you say, okay, what do we work on first thing in the morning? And what do most people work on first thing in the morning? What do you do? You go on your computer, you open it up, and you do email, right? Uh-huh. Where is email? Email is pretty easy. I mean, most emails you answer in less than a minute or two. It's just it's pretty simple stuff. And yet every morning we give up our best brain power, the time we should be doing the rocket science work, we're doing on silly emails, like which are not even that important. So one of the biggest productivity changes I made was I shifted my email to the afternoon. So I do all my email in one business day. So everybody gets answered, all my email gets done, but I do it as a batch. I do it once or twice a day and it's always in the afternoon. I never do my email in the morning. So I open my email really quickly in the morning, scan it to make sure it's not something urgent like someone's website's down and I need to help them with or something like that. But other than that, I do all my email in the afternoon and that's had a huge impact. It saves my morning for the really difficult tasks. I'm always afraid if I don't, do the email first thing, somebody will have an emergency. Maybe, but um, how many emergencies really do you get in a week? Like, think about it. How many emergencies have you had in the last six months by email? Not, well, yeah, probably not many. <laughs> probably none, right? <laughs> no, I do get that you could have a manager, you know, if you have a manager, if you're working in a work environment, that you may have a manager that may have something urgent. And that's why I suggest open it and just check to make sure there's nothing urgent. And make sure you're not opening all the emails. Look at the subject line just to get a feel for if something's urgent. If you've got something from your manager, open it. But don't go say, well, I wonder what that person wants. Or don't, you know, it has to be something <laughs> marked urgent. And if you, and remember, I'm answering, I'm doing all my email every day. So, an email's almost never, if it's that urgent, most people will phone you or your manager will walk into your office and say, Garland, I need you to do this right now. It's urgent. We're going to lose our biggest customer or something like that. Yeah. So, in most cases, um, it's not that urgent. And it also helps, and I mentioned working in all the email at once, it helps to work in a batch. So, imagine this. Let's say you've got a Come, you've got to write a proposal for a grant that's going to provide you with a whole bunch of money for something you need, maybe an event you want to run. And this proposal is really important. You've got to get it done in two days, and it's got to be done. So imagine you write your proposal like this. You open up your email. You answer one email. You, do, you phone back one phone call. You do a little bit of internet research. You work five minutes on the proposal. Then you go on and do another email. Then you do a little more internet research. Then you go on and answer another phone call. And then you go back and work five minutes and report on the proposal. That doesn't make any sense, does it? No, not really. But that's how most of us work. Progress. We're multitasking. <laughs> We're jumping from task to task. So instead, the proposal should be first thing in the morning for a minimum of one hour, maybe two hours if it's due to, you know, uh, tomorrow, hit it hard for a couple of hours, and then um, you do the email and the other things in the afternoon. You do all that all that light work in the afternoon, and that would have a huge impact if you if you do that, uh, just by shifting to when your best time is. And energy levels are different for other people. My wife, for example, was a competitive swimmer in her youth, so she can go to the pool first thing in the morning, uh, about six o'clock in the morning, and then come home and work, and she's energized. If I went to the pool at six in the morning, I I beat when I come back. I like to go to the pool in the evening, relax in the hot tub, come home and crash. So <laughs> you have to work with your energy levels. So I've learned yeah. that she can go to the pool that time. Sometimes we go together in the evenings, but you know, if she's going regularly and that works for her because her energy works differently, she's re-energized by the pool because she did that for so many years. So you have to find 
find out what your energy levels are, work to that. So I save, I reward myself with the easy tasks late in the day. So I, I find creating workshops is really easy for me. I enjoy doing it. It energizes me. So I save creating workshops till the afternoon. Uh, you know, the, the heavy writing, the, the, you know, I'm writing a book right now. So I would work on writing, I'm writing my second book. So number two coming up. So um, I'm writing my book and I work on that in the morning because it requires a lot deeper thought, you know, and, and so that's, a good time to do that so. yeah that sounds like a good time that's uh so you do your hardest stuff in the morning or in your high energy times in my high energy time which for me is morning probably is for most people but it i did want to caution people for that some people are like up at two in the morning and want to work. And those are the kind of people that are best to work remotely, like do graphic design or programming where you can work at night where you don't necessarily have to be in the office. Yes. But pick your best time and do your hardest work there. Brian Tracy calls it, it calls it um, eat, eat the frog first. Like, so if you have to eat a whole a meal and there's all good food and then you got to eat frog's legs, you've never had them. He always says, do the worst thing first. So worst first, if you remember that. Worst um, first. And, Eat the frog first, you know, get that out of the way. And then you reward yourself with easier tasks. Your tasks get easier and easier as you go on in the day. So I, in my task management program, I actually tag my tasks. What level of focus do I need? Is this deep focus, shallow focus, kind of a mid-range focus? And then I schedule my tasks or what I'm going to work on throughout the day based on that. Hmm. I noticed today, I was thinking about this because I knew this interview was coming up. I spend a lot of time trying to automate things, <laughs> trying to automate them. Automation is, is a great thing to do. So what I usually recommend to people is if you're going to do a task, you want to go through an analysis process before you do the task. So this is going to really slow you down for the first day or so. But for every task, the first thing you do is say, can I dump this task? Meaning if I stop doing this task, what would happen? Would anybody notice? Is it towards any of my high priority outcomes? Maybe I could just dump this task entirely, stop doing it and get that time back. If you can't dump it, maybe you could automate it. And that's where you're talking about. And automating is really helpful. Um, I automate lots of things. I use text expander programs to automate a lot of my email replies. I have my Wait, backups are all, I think it's called a text, a text expander. expander. So what a text expander is, it's a little program that runs and the one I use is called Phrase Express, which is for Windows. And what it does is I can type a couple of keywords, like a couple of keystrokes, and it will automatically insert pre-done blocks of text I've created. So think about an email you get where you might get a common reply, where someone says, um, Garland, what, um, when's your workshop happening? So you could have a reply that might say um, maybe I for info and then I workshop. And then it would drop in the whole block of text, including where it is, how they register, the link to it, and everything else. And wow. it would just drop that in just by typing in I workshop. Uh, another one I have is a lot of people will ask me, well, Garland, uh, well, how does your coaching work? And I type you, coach, and that drops in a link to my coaching program. So I've got automated all my URLs, my articles, some of my links to some of my articles, uh, common wait, things. Wait, wait, how did you auto automate your URLs? Same way, using the same program. It's a text oh, okay. It's called Phrase Express. So what you do is you just type out whatever text you want first in the program, uh -huh. and then you just say, how, would I, how do I want to call up this text? Do I want to use a comp keyboard combination? Do I want to just type a few letters? And it will automatically drop in that text. You can do the same thing in some email programs like Gmail has canned replies. But what I like about Phrase Express is it works everywhere, including online and including Microsoft Word and including my email. So wow. I can use it everywhere. So I automate proposals I do for people. Um, huge amounts of like it, I literally Phrase Express saves me oh, probably four or five, four to six hours a week, I would say minimum uh, by automating. So. And that's if I... It'll search for phrase express i'll find it you'll find it yes okay. uh and so the type of program it is it's called a text expander is what it's called okay so yes it's another great way to automate so i also automate my backups i use a service called backblaze so every day my backups are fully automated and put out to the cloud so i don't have to i used to manually do automations for my uh, sorry do backups for my wife and my myself and my laptop it, it took like three four hours a week and now it's all automated it's set and forget and i never have to think about it or never have 
have to do it again. So automating is really important. So when I look at the task, I say, can I d dump it first? Mm -hmm. Can I then automate it? Mm -hmm. Thirdly, can I delegate it? Meaning, do I have to do this task? And a lot of times we end up doing things we shouldn't. So think about what things can only you do? Maybe high level things you need to do, partnerships you need to connect with, high level workshops you need to create and the like. But anybody can do the research. Uh, for example, I'm going to do a workshop in the city where I live, a goal setting workshop for 2020. So I could start looking to say, where should I host this workshop? What kinds of facilities are available? Instead, I have a virtual assistant. And a virtual assistant is a personal assistant who just works online. And so this virtual assistant, mine, her name's Lauren. I say, Lauren, I need you to find this. I give her the instructions and she just goes off and does it. And she comes back with, uh, a, you know, two or three suggested places we can host it along with pricing and she's communicated with them and everything. So where did you find of, her? Where did I find her? I went through a lot of people before I found her, but <laughs> you can find them sometimes in virtual assistant forums online, uh, Facebook pages online, virtual assistants. So you can, you can look for them and you want to make sure you find a good one to work with. And I do pay her. I mean, so, so she does cost me money, but overall the money I save is well worth it. So, cause this is something she can do as well or even better than me in some cases better. So, even though I'm fairly good at detail work, I did work in a bank for 13 years, so I, I sh I'm, can't be bad at detail work. It's just not the best use of my time. I could be doing a new workshop. I could be creating content for, for my YouTube channel that, that could be out there. I could be um, approaching a large corporation about doing time management training for their entire you know, organization. I mean, there's so many things I can do that bring in more than enough money to pay for Lauren or pay for a virtual assistant. The other reason to delegate too is sometimes you suck at the task. <laughs> I'm lousy at graphic design, but I own my own web design company for years. And so people go, how did you own your own web design company if you don't do graphic design? And what the true trick was, was I was the marketing person and I had multiple graphic designers working for me who were very talented. So together we made great websites, but, but you don't want me do all by myself doing your graphics because my they're very really basic the graphics I do they're, they're really not not that high professional level so that's another example of something to outsource uh, outsource something anybody else can do better and you know not to talk about age here but I have a few gray hairs under this hat which is <laughs> Me too, a lot of them. <laughs> and um, you know people who grew up with computers I mean I adopted computers in in the you know the mid 80s when they kind of came out but i was all grown up i was an adult and i was working by then we had manual typewriters in school and there's two electric typewriters that i didn't even like because they, they type too fast you get your finger halfway <laughs> down change your mind and type right away i go Ooh. They, they were quite scary and i learned computers later so i'm, I'm quite good at them for my age, but yeah. people who grew up with them are often just much faster on the keyboard and quick. And I watched my son using Google uh, to search for things by voice. And I'm going, wow, I always type it in, you know, and, and it was so much faster. So, so yes, hiring a younger vir virtual assistant for computer related stuff, internet research, these kinds of things just makes a lot of sense. The other reason to do it, is I'm a pretty good copywriter. So meaning if I were to write the copy for your website, the, for your sales page, I'm pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do it for me. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm much better writing for you than I would be, would be for me. And the same thing, my wife is so humble. She can't write about herself. I said, go away. I'm, I'm going to write this for you because you know, you need to be raved about and, and you're not going to rave about yourself because she's too humble. She's not tooting her own heart enough. Yeah. So that's a, another reason why you might want to delegate these things as well. Okay. So that's the key is to say, you know, can I automate, can I you know, dump these things? Can I automate them? Can I delegate them? And then, and, and, and you can also defer them. Like you say, okay, I do need to do this, but it's not urgent right now. So I'm just going to schedule it for next week. Or so you defer them, you put them off as well. And after you've done all that analysis, the dump, uh, automate, defer, uh, delegate and defer then and only then are you allowed to do your work <laughs> <laughs> and only so, if you can't do the others and then it's got to be the highest priority item towards the outcome you want to achieve well before we cat <laughs> like cats but um before we what are some other uh, automation programs you use i'm curious so i use backblaze for for backing up things backblaze 
Okay. And what else? Uh, at Phrase Express, we talked about. Uh -huh. I use Mailer Light to automate all my email um, list building, like my people signing up for my list and letting them know when my webinars are coming up, let, letting them know whenever I have new content. So I've automated all that. Okay. Do you use follow up then? That's a pretty good one. No, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, haven't tried that one. I use Social B for a lot of the social media, and there's tons of these out there. So it's not a, it's not a case of where there's only one right one for, you know. No, for but I like to know what people use so I can see if I'm missing a good one. <laughs> yeah, I also use Notion. Uh, Notion is what I use for my task management system, my contact management system, my um, sharing templates with my my audience. Uh, I use it for tons of things. Uh, checklists. What does it do? Notion is kind of like a, it's a system to let you build your own systems. So it's kind of like a a spreadsheet or database meets wiki, wiki on the web, like a page like a Wikimedia, you know, oh, okay. Wikipedia would have. So it allows you to embed tables, lists, uh, clip from the web. It allows you to embed videos, um, PDF files and everything. Uh, so I can, I can create a table uh, that, where I use for all my tasks. So I created my own task management system because most, most task management systems don't have a field that says, what level of focus do you need? So I created my own task management system that says, I have this kind of focus uh, level. I, this needs deep focus. This needs shallow focus. So that's what I use Notion for, and it works very well for that. Uh, and, and so a lot of new things I'm creating or test things I create them, I create, create them all in Notion and share them that way. Wow. Okay. Wow. This is fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, what can can you tell us how to get a hold of you? If somebody wants to. Yeah, to get a hold of me, go to captaintime.com okay. and pop me a note there, and I'll happily answer it within one business day. <laughs> as we as we discussed, when I get the email, I get back to everybody within one business day. Uh, there's also links there to my YouTube channel. It has a lot of information, as well as some some free downloads, a couple of free online courses people can sign up for as well. So, great! Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Julia.